All right, welcome back. Now, um, the, in the last week or so, we've heard a lot of talk about um, codeine and um, the effects it's having on our youth. Um, we saw a documentary about uh, by an international media media house um, that went viral and an almost immediate reaction from the Federal Ministry of Health directing NAFDAQ to ban with immediate effect uh, codeine, the sale of codeine, or the importation of codeine, I beg your pardon, um, uh, which is supposed to be a cough sort of syrup but has become um, used uh, for many other things illegal. I have here with me Sholakwe Adebajo Leoma, who is the Deputy Director of Pharmaceutical Services, uh, here with us to help us understand how we're going to be nav navigating all of this. Thanks for being here today, ma'am. Thank you. Um, is this ban going to really solve anything? Let, let's start with that. What, what is this ban supposed to do? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that it can be smuggled in, which is or that it can be manufactured here either. What does the ban do in effect, first of all? Um, I think the ban is going to sort of put an urgent stop to the rampage. Okay. So it gives us time to try and look at the um, strategy of um, controlling the medicine. Yeah. For the immediate action, the ban, I think, is okay. Yeah. The ban is that subsequently we now find a way to, to, how do I put it now, to make it, to sort of regulate the yeah. use and the importation and the sale as well. Did you have to take this documentary for, for government to take this action? I mean, I think everybody in the country knew this was going on, and the, which is almost always people's belief as, as to how government treats things in the country where we know these things are happening until we're called out. Nobody wants to do anything. Why do we have to let it get this bad before we took action? Well, I would say the government has been silent on it. The government has always been on it. They're working through the NAFTAC, through NDLEA. They've always been on the issue. The pharmacist council, the medical council, everybody has always been on the issue. I think they just went viral probably because uh, more people are getting aware and more of the youth are being involved. Millions in the millions. Millions, that's exactly. It's, it's not just more. Now, so yeah. But the government has never been silent about it. Yeah. You're a pharmacist, and a lot of people have actually called out pharmacists and said they should be taking responsible for, responsibility for all of this because the pharmacists are making money all off of you know, these things. A lot of these drugs sometimes should not even be sold to young people or shouldn't even be sold to anybody without a doctor's prescription. People walk into pharmacies and able to pick up this, this bottle. You're a pharmacist, and what, what, uh, how does a pharmaceutical body, how do you guys work better, you know, to make sure that these things don't end up in the wrong people's hands? Okay, there's a regulation on ground. Um, as per who opens the pharmacy, um, if an outlet or the hospital, and um, there are rules guiding what to prescribe. We have some drugs we call prescription-only drugs. Maybe the Schedule A, the Class B types of drugs, that you only get on prescriptions. Codeine falls into this. Codeine shouldn't be an over the counter drug because um, it's normally used for mild to moderate pain. And um, in treatment of cough, it's only for chronic cough, not acute cough now. So ideally, before you can get it from the pharmacy, you have to have a doctor's prescription. Yeah. But what you see nowadays is like um, there's so many outlets, so many people selling drugs unauthorized. And the pharmacist council is not quiet on this. Yeah. They've been closing down shops, they've been closing down even pharmacy shops that are not um, well you know, equipped. They've been giving them the standard yeah. and they're on it. So, but, but obviously enforcement is not strong enough. Uh, who are you supposed to be working with now? Is it the police? Is it NAVDAC? Why has it gotten to its, its point where, because I mean, we all saw this documentary that made a lot of Nigerians sort of wake up eventually, where this man was in a restaurant and had cartons with, of, him. Uh, with him. How do people like that end up with these things and it, before it gets on the streets? Well, I think the regulation is um, going to be by all, not only a few people, the government, the NDLEA, the NAVDAC, Pharmacist Council, NMA, everybody is um, going to be involved in this. It's going rampage because uh, more and more people are getting aware. It's not as if it's just starting. It's been on. But more people are getting aware, and um, the government is not just waking up, just like I said. 
the man that had cartons, if we were to investigate, I didn't know about that. But if we had to investigate, we will find out that he probably got it from an illegal source. And that is what the government is trying to tackle now. Yeah. That's why there has been a ban so that we can stop it from all entries, including airports. Even if you have a bottle in your bag or anything, it's going to be checked. Yeah. So uh, I, want to, I want to talk about NAFDAQ in particular. And I know you're not a NAFDAQ official no, or anything, not. but I mean, you, you work closely with them, I want to believe, seeing as um, they regulate uh, your, your profession. Um, I mean, a lot of people have said, I'm not necessarily criticizing the, the, the present NAFDAQ administration, but saying that NAFDAQ used to be a lot of bark and bites in the past now. These days, we don't even hear, you know, we don't even hear the barking, not to talk of the biting. Um, in your opinion now, what, what do you think they should be doing more? as a regulatory body? Um, well, NAFDAQ has not been quiet. Um, it might look like it's been quieter than before, yes. but I think they've been working on the ground. And um, I think what they just need to do now is to involve more stakeholders. Yeah. Probably going to schools, going to media coverages, and um, let more people yeah. be involved in the attack yeah. and is to stop it. Besides, besides codeine now, what other drugs do you hear about that people get, have, have sort of gotten hooked on and used as a high, quote unquote, exactly. especially with young people? <laughs> Are there other drugs a lot of people should be worried um, about? Yes, well, from what I've been hearing, yes. I haven't had any close contact with any of them. But from what I've been hearing of tramadol, I've been hearing of um, um, Cannabis. I've been hearing of um, my children used to speak some, say some. The street language. Yes, the, the street, street language. Names. The chemical. Um, yeah. The science students and go. Mm -hmm. They make all sort of yeah. materials and go. Yeah. So, but they are mostly drugs that we use in very rare cases. Yeah. It's only that now it's gotten out of hand. It's gotten into wrong hand yeah. and it's being used for wrong purposes. Yeah. Being used for the side effects. Yeah. Or the severe side effects. 